Now I want to talk about the revolution in France. So while this uh, bourgeois industrial revolution is taking place in England, uh, the, the bourgeois revolution is taking place in France, uh, of course, at an earlier stage of the game, something that looks more like the English Revolution that I discussed in the previous series of videos. Uh, so there's some um, there's some crises in France. Uh, King Louis the Sixteenth calls the Estates General, uh, which is um, like the Parliament uh, of England, but a little less uh, formalized. Uh, and, and a little more um, uh, sporadic in, in, in its meeting. Uh, but it's split up into three estates. Um, the Catholic clergy are at the top, first estate, the nobles are in the second estate, and the commoners are in the third estate. And, and based on what I've said about England, you can imagine you know, how that all works out. Um, this is the kind of class structure that goes back to about the 14th century uh, in France. <clears throat> um, that's called, they, they actually meet in May, and by June, the third estate, the commoners, have established what they call the National Assembly, and they uh, convince the clergy, the first estate, to come on board with them. Now, most of the delegates to this parliament uh, are in this national assembly, and they start to discuss how they're going to reform the government. So they're taking it on themselves to be uh, uh, a conventional uh, parliament to uh, reconstitute the French government. Um, and Louis, uh, Louis the Sixteenth, now is is resistant to this, but he cannot entirely stop them politically, and so they move forward, um, you know, proposing things like the abolition of feudalism, state control of the Catholic Church, uh, expanded suffrage to more and more people. Um, I mean, allowing more people to vote, and they even begin to function as a governing parliament by July. They're actually beginning to take control of the administration of the state. Um, they're debating a new constitution, of course, and in the midst of this, there's the storming of the Bastille back in Paris. I should mention that the Estates General and the National Assembly is all taking place in the Palace of Versailles which is out in the countryside away from Paris. Um, but back in Paris, as uh, people on the street are hearing the news of what's going, out, uh, going on out in Versailles, and especially the maneuverings that Louis is making and um, per putting certain people in prison and, and you know, trying to manipulate the situation as well as he can, uh, people are starting to get worried that there's gonna be some kind of crackdown and uh, they storm the Bastille, and uh, it's a prison. They free the prisons. There's not very many prisoners there, but there are a lot of weapons uh, um, there. And so now the people on the street are armed with weapons uh, in a very chaotic, disorganized way. Um, the National Assembly issues the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen, which is um, you know, a, an interesting document from the perspective of uh, um, enlightenment, humanistic ideas about citizenship and freedom and uh, rights, uh, very similar to our Declaration of Independence and uh, many of our ideas that we get about democracy and what it means to be a free citizen are actually as much related to this Declaration of the Rights of Man as it is to anything from the United States. Um, <clears throat> uh, ultimately, 
So this is 1789. Now we're talking a couple of years later, the legislative assembly comes into place. This is another parliament. So um, um, uh, each of the major sort of division here is, is a parliament or, or a monarchy. I'm following that same sort of structure that I, I've established in earlier lectures. Um, and they actually are trying to reform the legal system. That's why it's called the Legislative Assembly. Then the French Republic is formed in 1792. And so now in France, you have a Republican government uh, for the first time ever. Remember that the Commonwealth was back in, in uh, 1642 uh, back in England. This is, uh, you know, 150 years later, now France has a republic for the first time with no monarch. Um, there's revolutionary wars going on across the continent. England is always being drawn into these conflicts. So this is a big thing that's happening for England as well, because England is fighting against the French as uh, this chaos is taking place and getting involved. Uh, militarily, and that's draining the resources in England, and also it's disrupting the trade of grain and, and other resources um, from the continent. Um, and this is causing food prices to skyrocket back in England. Um, the National Convention is formed, so this is the Parliament of the French Republic and uh, they proclaim the abolition of monarchy. That's in September. By January, they've executed um, Louis the 16th. And uh, these are like the guillotine uh, executions. Um, this is the beginning of that. But shortly after, the, public, uh, the Committee of Public Safety um, takes over the National Convention and uh, sort of in a, in, a, in a coup of a sorts, not a real military coup, but nonetheless a very aggressive, uh, you know, there is a kind of ideological thinking that people fall into allowing the Committee of Public Safety to be formed, but once it's formed and once it, once it takes over the administration of the National Convention, then they can't wrest back control from it. And this is where the reign of terror takes place. And this is where it's just one head chop after another for months and months on end. And so uh, going on for uh, over a year. And um, finally, in July of 1794, Robespierre, uh, the leader of this uh, Committee of Public Safety in the reign of terror is um, is tried for treason himself and executed. And then there's a, there's a period called the Themidorian uh, reaction, which is largely like an ideological reaction, like saying, oh, that, that Robespierre and reign of terror, that was, we weren't thinking straight and we gotta, we gotta correct things and go in a different direction. Um, there's also a white terror, which is like the reign of terror, but it's like retribution, revenge killings for the reign of terror. Um, and, uh, and then by 1795, we have a constitution of the year three. Um, this is a written constitution. So uh, there's an upper house and a lower house and, a, and an executive. Um, we have the council, the council of anciens. Uh, the Council of Ancients and the Council of the 500 and um, operating very similarly to our Senate and uh, House of Representatives. The executive is a little different because it only has five members and these five members are chosen from the, uh, the assembly, that's the parliament, uh, every year and they're chosen by lot. So it's like a roll of the dice. Um, so uh, that's an interesting um, situation. And, um, but we do see that 
you know, especially if we just kind of think about all that I discussed with the Commonwealth of England and how that came about, um, something similar takes place here and it's messy business and there's kind of coups and, you know, uh, it's not, it's not all just like peaches and cream here, uh, but uh, they do something very similar in a very compacted amount of time um, and, and, and develop a, a genuine French Republic. So that's, that's interesting. Okay, so now France is in on the game. And France was a much more traditional feudal society. A lot, like there really were serfs up until this point out in the countryside. And there really were manors running in the ancient feudal way. And the dukes, you know, took their, their position as a duke very seriously. And knights took their position as a knight very seriously. Uh, as if it was still medieval times. You know, there obviously were changes uh, that were taking place, but they were still trying to hold on to that. And, and, and maybe that's why the French Revolution is so violent because there's kind of like a lot of pent up tension and it kind of snaps uh, and they move very quickly uh, into this new phase of things. But there's more to that story and we will get back to that a little bit, uh, well, as we move through this, we'll see this story kind of interweave uh, with our main story, which is really about England and the bourgeois uh, industrial revolution, not this political revolution. Although the industrial revolution is a political revolution. 